The moment you've all been waiting for. You what? No, <laughs> well, that hit the spot. Hello, welcome back to the golf cast, which we are filming this time. Via Rue. So good to see Slide you. In. Slide I know, in person. I don't know why we didn't ever try record the podcast over Zoom before anyway. I know. Were we, were we glam enough, though, in the first few lockdowns? Oh, my God, definitely not. I was, like, permanently in my pajamas for, like, six months, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm only now slightly, slightly starting to make an effort. But the last time me and Kendra actually saw each other was the gossips. The gossips. I know. Ah. <laughs> so quiet. There's just been so much going on. And that was wild, wasn't it? Yeah, so wild. Um. But it was amazing. Like, there's such a good response to it. And because we were really nervous about it, like, weren't we? Uh, because, like, yeah. it's obviously we never did it like that before. Yeah. Um, but oh, it was so good. And, so like, over 43,000 people now have watched it on YouTube, which is just mad. It's crazy. Yeah, it's mad. We were, we were talking to different broadcasters about, like, possibly putting it on TV or on a player and it didn't work out in the end and then I was like we were trying to even tell them what numbers we thought it was going to be like I, I never knew how many numbers you're going to get but like 43,000 is just amazing like I was so delighted to see it Lucy Kennedy was amazing and like everybody got so dressed up which I didn't honestly think I didn't know like what was going to happen I thought maybe yeah. one would, but there's a really gorgeous spread in VIP magazine which is here somewhere on my table um of like everyone's so glam at home so, like that was just amazing and it was so good to see you in real life. I know in person we were like hey it's so weird because like obviously before the pandemic like we were literally around each other all the time like literally every day and and then yeah. like to not and then like finally seeing each other in person again it's like hey it was scary as well because like I hadn't been in a room like indoors with anyone literally except for my family at Christmas and when we did that we all got tested but obviously we tested everybody coming in and we had a really strict uh, COVID officer Paddy who was just he was so nice he literally was wanted, strict he was strict he was very strict. He literally wanted to wrap me in bubble wrap. He was like, you're high risk. And then anytime someone was even like slightly looking my direction, Paddy was like, move away from Ali. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, even though it was tested, but no, it was an amazing experience. And I think definitely it's shown us that there's an appetite for like live events, even doing stuff like this, like doing the Goss Cast on Zoom. Like we just want to start doing a little bit more stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so how have you been in general? How are you finding this lockdown? It's nearly over. Yeah, it's mm. that's like yeah. the response of the entire country right now. It's like yeah, it's just like I don't know how to feel anymore. Like I feel like I'm just numb to the whole thing, and I'm just like, like I feel like a plane could crash into my garden, like right yeah. now, and I'd be like, right, okay. Yeah, we were texting <laughs> Kendra. Honestly, like if you woke up tomorrow morning and there was dinosaurs resurrected from the dead and zombies wherever I mean you'd be like Grant like no you know like just nothing surprises me anymore so I'm just like it's weird to me because I feel like I'm coming out of this in a so much better way than last year so when I think of last year I was like really isolated I wasn't seeing anybody I was in my apartment on my own yeah depressed like didn't know what to do like I just felt totally lost and now I've just moved into this new house I got my vaccine which is the column which is out today so uh, yeah. some, um because the amount of deaths second wishes I've got since I got it which has just been a roller coaster situation I um, can't I still can't believe that yeah I still can't believe you got that reaction response has been wild like I put up on Twitter and Instagram first that I got offered the vaccine and I honestly thought like people have been following me like I honestly think people give out that I talk about how um medically vulnerable I am like it annoys people so I de definitely didn't think I needed to reiterate that like I was type 1 diabetic I just put it out there and it got such a crazy weird response even to just get the appointment like so many people were like why are you getting it like that doesn't seem fair my parents didn't get it and all these people were like guilting me for like accepting the appointment and I was like right this is wild yeah. and then when I got it I expected something but I mean I think I had 10 people comment under my photo like core IP and then loads of people dm'd me with links to articles of people who died from blood clots just being like this is going to be you and then a few of the people were like you're going to be infertile and then some of them were more passive aggressive they were like I hope you live a long life but let's just wait and see dot 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 like all these strangers who like don't follow me 
And I'm like, if you're going to spout this whole my body, my choice thing, how can you criticize somebody else for getting it? That doesn't make sense. If you're genuinely believing it's everyone's choice, why would you want me to die? Because I've chosen to get it. Like, it's so weird. People are so strange. I think being in lockdown has made a lot of people like kind of lose their minds a bit. And like, we've seen this where like a few influencers have spoken out about it saying that trolling has gotten so much worse over the past year in general because people are locked up in their homes, they're sitting on their laptop. I think it's really bad at the moment. Like obviously when that Instagram page is around, things are bad, but I actually think it's at that level again. Like Mm -hmm. too many people have contacted me in the last, even just few weeks, really upset about threads they've seen about themselves and things like that. And I'm just like, do people not realize that right now, influencers, celebrities, whatever, are just as vulnerable as you are sitting at home right now. Like anyone who's watching this, if you're having shit time, why do you think people in spotlight aren't having a shit time? Like I know Dr. Kira Kelly um, deleted her Twitter. I was actually talking to her the other day because I was like, how are you getting on? Like, you know, obviously I saw you delete Twitter and she was just like, the stuff that I was getting sent there was just so crazy. And she put up a comment on her Instagram the other day. I don't know if you follow her, but she put up what someone, an anti-boxer had messaged her and loads of people started tagging me in it because they were like, these are the same people that messaged Ali or whatever. So I was just like, why? Like, where is the hate coming from? Like, fair enough if I was, you know, booked in for a campaign from AstraZeneca and I was like, hashtag SP, get your vaccine. Like, then it's like, right, feel free to talk to target me and yeah. ask questions. But like, I literally was just like, I'm so grateful to get the vaccine. Like, you'd swear I was shoving it down people's throats. And the thing is that, I was saying this on News Talk during the week, we don't live in like a dictatorship. No one's forcing people to get the vaccines. If you don't want to get them, like whatever yeah I think it's important that there's someone in the media or in the public eye on Instagram that's talking about it because like I don't know what you think about this but I've noticed that a lot of celebrities and influencers just are not talking about COVID anymore and they're not talking about the vaccine and I think there's a concern from influencers and celebrities that if they say they're going to get it if they say they're pro it that they're going to lose followers and that they're going to annoy people but I just feel like that doesn't matter I'd rather lose 5,000 followers tomorrow and think that maybe I helped save one life in this country like it just doesn't the balance is like it makes no sense yeah I think like a select few have been really good like the likes of James Kavanaugh and stuff have been amazing but yeah no like I do agree there's a lot of people that are just kind of being silent ignoring it kind of just and like I get things like when I talked about it and I got all this death wishes or whatever I was like right this is why but I was talking to my family about it afterwards and I was like I don't regret it though because so many people messaged me so when I put up that I got the vaccine or a lot of people were like why are you getting it early or whatever and I was like well I'm actually getting a bit second late like I'm a type 1 diabetic and lots of people had messaged me since February saying that they had got their AstraZeneca so a few people messaged me I'd say close to 60 people of all the people that messaged me messaged me to tell me they got the vaccine weeks ago and that they haven't even told their friends because they're so worried. worried about the backlash and that's it's, and it's, it's so stupid because it shouldn't be like that like if I heard any of my friends about to get it I'd be like oh my god amazing like I'm delighted for you but this I is just, what's concerning yeah. like obviously I talked about in my column last week there's been a certain tv presenter saying all sorts on her Instagram and I'm like if we're looking at this every day and we're looking at conspiracy theories or suggestions you know that people faked getting COVID in the public eye which is a wild accusation to make in the first place if we're seeing that on Instagram, we need to see the opposite argument. Like we need to see people in the public eye or people with a following going, I've booked in for my vaccine or I can't wait to get my vaccine. It's not saying that you like medically approve of it. Like I'm obviously not a doctor. Like I can't say to you, get AstraZeneca, you'll be fine. And I was like one of the last people under 60 to get it. So like, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know they banned it now, but yeah, like I just, I really hope we start seeing more. And I've talked to some of the influencers and celebrities who, are like I'm really glad you went out there and said those things I just hope that they're going to do the same but I, I do think we'll see a few of them but like who knows when they're even going to get offered the vaccine now I think people are under the impression that like anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers are like these mad right-wing people that are like so distanced from them but it's actually like a lot of people that you might not even know that are in your circles okay. that are believing yeah. these things that they're reading on Facebook and stuff Oh, the Instagram, that one that we shall not name. 
is wild like I said yeah. I told him last week like we're keeping the receipts like every day I go on I'm like that person just liked it I'm like what? I know and I'm like did they like by accident I but don't I don't know. Know. people like things and unlike things but this is why I'm just so passionate about making sure the right information is out there and if it's like get death wishes over then grant like whatever someone has to do it I just don't know who else is like over in the US it's very different I feel like I feel like even Ivanka Trump posted a photo of getting the vaccine like she's one of the last people I actually thought would do that but we've seen Ryan Reynolds Blake Lively and um, who was a Dolly Parton <laughs> she put up the yeah. sheet like her own vaccine her own vaccine but people have been so just different over there I don't know I feel like they're really pushing the let's reopen Hollywood and then did you see as well there's a new concert coming like a pro a pro vaccine concert oh did you not see that so Selena Gomez is hosting it um and it's going to be performers uh all the big performers but it's basically to promote getting your vaccine so that's going to be an interesting one. Right. Okay. Yeah, I know. Let's see how the world handles that. Like, it's just. Yeah, I feel like that's going to tip people over the edge. <laughs> I was talking to someone about this today about how anti vaxxers are also anti lockdown, which is so confusing because, like, if you want the country to open up, do you not want people to get the vaccine? Yeah, I just don't know. Like, anyway, I look forward to the day where we're not talking about vaccines and COVID and lockdowns. Yeah. Um, so this week we wanted to start off by talking about all things Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Obviously, we the last golf cast was when was it Christmas time? So we did our year roundup, which was like three hours long or something. <laughs> and now we're back. Okay, so obviously the night the Gossies went live on YouTube, <laughs> Meghan and Harry's Oprah interview went live like what three or four hours later. And it's mad to see how much of an impact it's made and it's still making. Like, it's yeah. funny thing about Meghan and Harry. Like, I know there's a lot of criticism about them. My, my main criticism about them is how they've gone about everything. It's not that I criticize her or criticize him. It's not like I don't like them, but I do find it odd that they're so anti publicity. And then they literally talked to the biggest talk show host in the world. And it wasn't like, yeah, you know, it's been tough. It's like the royal family are racists. I wanted to kill myself. Like it was so jaw dropping, like badness. And now it's like, God, we're nearly two months since then. And the fallout is just still so big. Like, what have you made of the whole thing? I, I don't know, like when I watched it, I was very pro them. I was like, I felt really sorry for them. You know, I've always kind of had like a soft spot for Harry. And it just like, I always think back to the time when like Diana died and he had to walk behind yeah. the coffin at his funeral. And it was just, I have so much sympathy for him. So I was instantly like, I feel so bad for them. You know, like instant sympathy. But then when people started pointing out like, some things that they had said in the in the interview that kind of like did not up yeah did not up so then I kind of started questioning it a little bit but I don't know I just I don't really know what to make of it I feel bad for them but I know I understand people's argument that they've gone about this wrong mm. and I think as well like the craziest part of it as well that I thought was that Prince Philip was in hospital the week the Oprah interview went out and I think that's what a lot of people have been angry about in general about Meghan and Harry it's their timing of a lot of things they've done like you know even the first time Meghan was like no one's asked me if I'm okay they were on a trip in Africa meant to promote like the stuff that was going on there and the poverty and all that and everyone was like really you're like in this third world country being like mm, poor me so people thought the timing was bad on that and then I think with this, a lot of people were just like, wow, this is a bit insensitive, but I guess there's no good time to do these sort of things. Mm. But I agree with you. I watched it live. Like, I think I was one of the only people in Ireland that did. Like, everyone was. Yeah, I remember waking up and seeing your tweets and being like, of course, you watched it live. I watched it. And like, like from because of my background is journalism, like I always try to look at things really unbiased and as balanced as I can. So I watched it and I, I did feel so bad for her. And I hate that kind of you know I don't know that mentality that women are always lying and stuff I really don't like that at all so 
I wanted to believe everything she said but there was just one or two things like you're saying I was just a bit like like when they when she said they got married three days in private and that you know it all got too much and the day wasn't about us I'm like literally you were on every single front page and every single newspaper in the entire world of course the day was about them like it wasn't about the public I just thought that was a weird thing to say and then like the archbishop had to come out and like be like I didn't do anything illegal I never did that and it's like they put him in such a vicarious situation where he had to like come out and deny that he'd broken the law I was just like why would you say something? yeah I think the problem there was the way she phrased that she should have just said we exchanged private vows three days beforehand yeah. not we got she literally said we got married that's why everyone was like what and I thought as well I was talking to my when me and my family were all talking about this there were so many parts in here that I liked and I did believe like I genuinely did like I don't think Megan is making up the level of you know depression she suffered and isolation and like I don't I would always believe someone if they said they felt suicidal I would never ever be like that's not true do you know what I mean I do think that was true but overall there was just a few things I felt like it would have been great if she took a little bit of responsibility because you know, there's been all these rumors of like so many staff have quit and there's rumors of bullying and like we don't know what's true and what's not I thought it was strange that that wasn't even mentioned and for Oprah to do a really good interview I just felt it should have been a little bit more balanced and if Megan had been like you know what things did happen over the year as you can now tell I was in a really bad place and maybe I did say and do things I shouldn't have but it wasn't like that it was all very much like I'm the victim and then she brought up Kate and she really landed Kate in it I thought too you know yeah well she made me cry I was just like ah so yeah there was just it was weird watching it because I know it was real life but it felt like a drama and that's what's weird about the whole situation is for people who seem to really not want this it was done so dramatically like even the trailer is like you know what's the phrase again were you silent or were you silenced <laughs> that, oh, God. That is the memes that created amazing no do you remember the boat that got stuck <laughs> the Suez Canal or Suez is that it Suez I don't know what did she say what was the one that kept going around it was like <laughs> 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 no what was it that man was so good it was like anyway but it was the picture of the boat in Megan's seat <laughs> <laughs> and it was like I don't know I need to I need to find a book the men's have been great and can we remember that Oprah got five million dollars to do this interview five oh my million. god did she five million dollars yeah that's your bag Oprah and they're mm -hmm. like they're close friends and their neighbors and this was the other part that made me a little bit uneasy because when Megan arrived well, like I think we knew it was going to be slightly biased when we heard that it was going to be an interview with Oprah why did Oprah start off by going we haven't discussed anything and Megan's like no and I'm like yeah and I'm the queen of England like honestly why would you walk into Oprah's garden or not their garden a friend's garden that they really wanted to let us know that it wasn't one of their gardens I don't know what that was about but like I just Lizard. I just think and also do you know when she said her mother didn't know about the panorama Princess Diana interview I'm pretty sure aunts on Mars knows about know about that interview the Princess yeah I, I kind of one of because I actually I re I really like Megan but okay. one of the things that annoys me is the way that she kind of pretends that she had no idea who Prince Harry was or how big the royal family was and in fairness over the odd time it's like come on like there was a few moments yeah where she, was, she like, did kind of press her sometimes yeah well yeah I agree with you and I just remember that article you wrote when they first got engaged because one of her friends said she had like the princess diaries in her college dorm or something yeah oh my god that was ridiculous <laughs> like that might not be true but yeah that's the thing I just think I really admire Megan and I I know I must give you their biography it's really good I read it and I was like god that woman has achieved so much like you know this she's achieved things that like most of us never will I do really like her I would just have loved a little bit more I, like if she had taken a little bit more of responsibility and being like look do you think she said she didn't google prince harry before the date and stuff i was like ah oh, come on yeah like that's the kind of thing that annoys me i think like i wish she would just own it more and be like yeah i freaking bagged the prince unreal i love her like, it is unreal 
I'd love her to be like, yeah, I Googled him and he Googled me, but like nothing was ever going to prepare me for what happened. And that's a believable sentence. That's like, but sorry, oh. I Google everyone. I Google my freaking Deliveroo driver. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I literally Google everyone. <laughs> do you know? Yeah. So no. like, I, I find it so hard to believe that she didn't Google him. Like, My stalking skills are wild as Kendra knows as a fact. Like it, they're wild. Yeah. But there's, I can't think of any woman in the world right now who wouldn't google but especially if, if someone is like i'm gonna set you up on a blind date with like this prince of monaco i'd be like oh my god i'd obviously look him up i wouldn't be like he's just kind you know <laughs> i'd be on google yahoo every single search engine possible but the sad the sad thing about the whole megan and, th- and this thing i do actually like her it annoys me that i'm saying these things but like this is just how it's coming across like i can only comment on what i've seen but um, the sad thing now is that obviously the funeral took place. We're recording this on Saturday. So the funeral took place today. Yeah. Megan didn't come. Like she was never going to come. Let's be honest. Remember yeah. Adele, when they went to Canada at Christmas, Megan did not come back at Christmas time. Do you yeah. that? So the Queen hasn't seen Archie in a very long time. So she stayed in Canada with Archie and Harry came back on his own. Now yeah. he's back on his own again. So we've heard like two different reports. Sorry, my next door neighbors have decided to mow their lawn. So if you hear a random ring, that's what that is. Um, so yeah, sorry, I was just saying that we heard two different reports to why Megan wasn't going to attend the funeral. So the first one was that her doctor didn't okay it. She is having a problem. That's totally yeah. viable. But then friends of hers went to the US press, which they tend to do quite a lot. Um, and said that the real reason she wasn't going was because she felt her presence would overshadow the day. I'm like, I can't argue with that. I, I, think- I Yeah, I think that's totally fair enough because it would have. But like, what do you think were the big moments of the day? So this is the thing, she didn't go, but now one of the main stories is that she left a handwritten note hmm. at the very beginning of the funeral. So it was there front and center before the ceremony started. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand why she didn't go because I think the headlines would have been all about her being there. And even still, Prince Harry being there alone, it's it's massively about him reuniting with the family after like a year. Um, So yeah, I understand why she didn't go. The handwritten note thing, I think that was like the press trying to find some way to... Maybe write about her like somehow being involved but I don't know well, why put it there at the start if you didn't want it to be known this is what confuses me about her surely they could have given a private note to the queen I just find it a little strange I know Piers Morgan genuinely hates Megan so I'm not at that level but sometimes things he says I'm like it's kind of fair like they'll be like we're not putting Archie in the spotlight and then they'll release a new photo of Archie and I'm like I'm just confused. I'm just confused by what they want. And I think that's what the general public are. And obviously we're Irish, it doesn't affect us. But I think there's a lot of anger from the British because it's like their family, like the royal family is like their family to them. And they're kind of like, why are you doing this? But at the same time, like if they just want to go live their lives, I'm like, I don't feel like there's been much like negative press about them really since the Oprah interview, has there? Like I know people have been breaking down stuff in the interview saying that's not true this isn't true but overall I feel like people have kind of left them alone yeah well apart from obviously the whole Pierce Morgan stuff well you know what Megan must be delighted Pierce is gone Sharon Osbourne is gone like she has created real change based on the interview she did like that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the Oprah interview yeah she did believe her and felt it was wrong for somebody on TV to question whether she was really suicidal, to question whether there was any racist remarks made. And I think that's why broadcasters started being like, we can't be a part of this like bullying. Mm. You know what I mean? As in the questioning someone who's coming out and they're saying, this is how I feel. and like, this is what's happened to me. And I agree with that. Like, I don't think people should be. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's just not a lot of clarity as to what they want. You know, they obviously wanted to leave the royal family, but from what I can see, they still want to be- In the spotlight. 
I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm not going to say celebrities, but they want to be known. Like even the fact, obviously they did the Oprah interview, but even the fact that Harry did James Corden, which was unreal, by the way, so good. It was so entertaining. But just the fact that he's doing stuff like that, I'm like, you obviously do want to be in the spotlight. Right, when the trolley of tea like crashed. (laughs) Yeah, that was so funny. But yeah, you're right. And this thing, I don't, like I don't care if they want to be famous too it's just don't say that you don't don't yeah. like leave us alone we want to be private individuals and then be on a bus with James Corden on one of the biggest Friday night shows in the country or Saturday night shows They're, that's my little issues I think if, do, like do whatever you want in life I've no burglary but don't say one thing and give like the reason I've kind of been up in arms about them a little bit and I've said this before in the podcast is because they constantly give out about the media. And I always feel personally attacked because obviously we're a media organization. Now I know we've never been going through people's bins or recording, you know, voicemails and there are media that have done that. So I understand that, but Mm. they're so, so negative about any media. And that gets to me because there were so many media, so many publications, so many royal correspondents that did nothing but actually fight for them in their corner and write positive things. You know, fashion places that, wrote really positive things about her as well like she got to guest edit Vogue like but they keep saying that the media is like the devil and that's Mm. what kicks me off so I'm like you can't say the media is bad we hate them but then do their own podcast do the late late do Oprah Winfrey release statements to Harper's Bazaar I'm like this doesn't make any sense if you don't like the media why are you still working with the media so that's the thing that grates me a bit but like whatever they want to do like I wish them a happy life and I hope after this they they do find a little bit of solace in it but I, it makes me sad to think Harry came back today and like I mean what did the pictures look like did it look like no one was really chatting yeah like I obviously watched the whole thing because I was covering it on the site and it was very like solemn you know like they all were wearing masks it was very you know it wasn't like there was people shedding tears and stuff. It was very like, we're here to do this and then that'll be it kind of thing. And and I thought it was, I know it came out during the week that the queen had to like reverse her decision and not allow people to wear the royal uniform. I know those different reports, you said that there is not a state funeral and that was a decision, but like, it does make me sad. Like I do feel sorry for Harry. Like he served in the army and he's had these titles. Yeah. Like, like, and he actually like went on a tour in Afghanistan. I know. He's like one of the only ones that actually did. And the funny thing is, I feel like people always forget this about Harry. Is like the reason he did that tour, I don't know if you remember, it was after the Las Vegas photos. The queen was like, right, off you go. Go to war. God, then. both boy. Like. Yeah, she was literally like, no, 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 you go serve now. Um, so he had he has had a wild side I think that's another thing people are a little bit annoyed about because Harry has had in some ways a little bit of a free pass because William is the person that's next in line so mm. Harry hasn't had anywhere near as much pressure as William has had and I think that's where a lot of the criticism has come from as well they're like Kate dealt with so much worse William dealt with so much worse Megan comes in for like 18 months and then suddenly she's like it was the worst time in my whole life but Oh, I mean, it's provided a lot of entertainment the over interview, though. I'll give them that much. Oh my god, yeah. Um, but yeah, when I was when I was watching the funeral today, I was, I did feel really sad for Harry because, like, can you imagine the awkwardness of that? Like after the whole, like, let alone him stepping down yeah. from the royal, like as a senior member of the family last March, but then the fact that it's only a weeks after the Oprah interview. Because. it's just so awkward and like you could feel the tension the tension mm. oh it's just I'd oh. love to just be a fly on the wall like do they sit him down and go Harry mate like will we see this in an upcoming crown episode where they're all like Harry like what's going on or did he literally just pop in and say nothing I like William Shirley and Charles they must have said something to him like some conversation mm. must have happened I if, don't I, know. if I was Megan, I'd be a bit nervous sending them back to be honest. <laughs> because like I wouldn't be there to be like, what's going on? But she's obviously fairly confident that they've made all these decisions together. And it's awful that like he had to go back without the support of her. 
yeah as well so so one thing I really enjoyed about the Oprah interview was actually Harry and I I think I would have loved to have, for this to have been an actual Harry interview and for Megan to come in the second part because it was it's hard to listen to her talking about just 18 months but when he came in and was like I feel trapped my, I felt trapped my entire life mm. I was like oh my god like that really like hit a note with me and I was like Jesus like when you hear it from him and you just know that like he would never say something like that so flippantly like because he knows the ramifications whereas Megan is so new to the firm I'm sure her weighing up in her mind whether to say something or not is very different from Harry literally saying my own family are trapped in this like organization where everyone is so miserable like when he said that I was just like yeah one of the things that really struck me was when he came on during the interview and said that his security was taken away Mm -hmm. and the way he explained that he was like you know I was born into this and the level of threat isn't gone yeah Yeah. Uh, like this I didn't choose this life for myself I was born into this and then for them to take his security away yeah it's just like it was just so unfair and I was like god like no that must have been such a scary situation especially having a baby then as well and you just want them to be protected no like there's no doubt there were so many things that that were just like heart-wrenching to watch and you want to be on their side but I do understand the questioning of some of the stuff they said I think it's right to question things like calling the royal family racist that's a huge thing to have said and I understand that people in the UK are kind of like did that actually happen and to not name anyone as well it's like it's a weird thing to do but I think it's, it's it was weird watching it because I felt like we were living history like live so I just feel like the interview is going to be one of these massive things that happen like my mum always says she remembers the panorama interview with Princess Diana like yeah they, my mum said she remembered it as well yeah, like the, no one even really knew it was happening it was kind of like on the night they were like coming up and everyone was like oh <gasps> like oh my god actually if you guys are interested in all this stuff the um Princess Diana in my own in her own words on Netflix oh it's so good good brilliant I loved this series of the crown because I'm so interested in Princess Diana yeah it was really really good um so yeah I'm dying for this season yeah Yeah. and the actors are changing the next season I know so that's gonna be mad that actress Emma I thought was a very good Diana Oh my god. But yeah, I'm excited for the next season of the crown. I'm excited for the year. I hope they get to Harry and Megan. I know the director, the creator said he's yeah. not sure will ever get there. But now that they're literally an integral part of Netflix, they have this massive deal with them. I'm sure they've given them a few bits of information. I feel like it would be a sin if they didn't. I feel like Harry like is very pro the crown. Like he's brought it up a few times in interviews and been like, we watched it and yeah, you know. I'm just like, sorry, is your whole family not like, this is crazy? Like, imagine, Kendra, a Netflix show being like the Beckers. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine. Some show. (laughs) And they dramatise parts and like add things that aren't factually correct. That's the thing that annoys me about the crime, but it must be a protection thing to make sure it comes across as fiction. But like, sometimes I see things and like, they definitely never happen. So I'm like, why? Or I'll like Google afterwards the episode and it's like that never actually happened it's so yeah because like their actual real life is dramatic enough that they shouldn't have to change anything do you know what I mean so it's like why the story on it how like an entire season skipped past the fact that like princess Anne was kidnapped yeah someone tried to kidnap her and then like tried to shoot her or something and like they completely skipped over that I was like that's an amazing storyline. That's like an entire season worth of yeah. Stuff. Poor Princess Anne, she's like, right, I'm fucking like show my life. I forgot. I know. Very like talk about. It is weird sometimes. You forget about Prince Edward and Prince Andrew and Princess Anne. Sometimes you're like, oh yeah. Well, that's- Prince Andrew, we won't be forgetting about him. And that that's the one the one thing in all this argument about Harry and Meghan and the amount of negative press. Like I do absolutely agree that the level they have got compared to the Prince Andrew stuff is wild, wild, like, like ridiculous. By the FBI, oh, Meghan ordered avocado toast and it's like front page news. But like, yeah, Prince Andrew is under investigation. Like so slightly mentioned. Yeah, I love how people always bring it up on Twitter. Like anytime there's like a big story about Meghan or something like that, people are like. Um, the FBI literally are looking to interview yeah. Prince Andrew. That was another part of the Oprah interview I was annoyed about. Like when they were, when she was like, you know, 
there's no area we can't go to. I was like, oh, let's get, and then like no mention. I don't know if that was legal reasons, but like, I just thought that was weird as well. Mm. I mean, I, I tweeted it on the time at the time. I would have loved Tommy Tiernan to just have done it, you know? He's oh like, my God, yeah. You would get them to say anything. Just look at them and go, yeah. she'd be like, okay. She'd okay. be like, listen. <laughs> I just think he's so good at that though, isn't he? Yeah. It's there and then someone's like, I killed a man. Like they just like tell him. Like, He'd be like, so did the queen boot you out or what? <laughs> yeah and then she, they'd be like yeah yeah <laughs> Can we start a petition to get harry and megan on the tommy tuna show oh my god we have so many petitions going like our mcdonald's one number one that. mcdonald's it's a hate crime me and kind of decided. it's a hate crime oh my god. That's, you can't order sauces on the mcdonald's when you can order sauces you just can't order the sweet and sour sauce which is the elite sauce of McDonald's, in my opinion. You can order other sauces? You can. You can order, like, barbecue, sour cream, sour cream and chive or something. I'm like, I don't want that with my notes. I tried to order. So you can get sweet and sour sauce if you order chicken nuggets. And I was saying together, I did it one time. No sweet and sour cream. Right? <laughs> like the most devastating thing to ever happen to you. I honestly was like, I don't even want to eat this now. And then the other day I got them and they did arrive and I sent it into the gospel WhatsApp and I was like, trigger warning because the sauce was actually there. But what's the other hate crime we have going that we have petition for? Mm, I need to think about what this. What is it? Always come up with petitions. Some things just aren't right in the world. But yeah, I would love to see them on Tommy Tiernan. <laughs> like it's never going to happen, honestly. No, but never. But like we can dream. We can dream. Um, and then moving on from Harry and Meghan, we have to talk about the splits that have happened. So many splits. The biggest of all, Kim and Kanye. Kim and Kanye, you weren't surprised at all, were you? I wasn't surprised, but I was like very sad because as you know, I am a long time Kimye stan. He stands them both separately and together. Yeah. Um, but no, I wasn't surprised at all. Like, you know, obviously all that stuff happened last year. Um, when he was doing his presidential campaign, the kind of crack started to show. Um, it was like last July when he did his rally and he spoke about almost aborting their... He accused um, Kim Kardashian of trying to abort North. Yeah. And like, it's just, it's such a personal thing to talk about. And, you know, there was sources at the time saying that she was furious, blah, blah. And then, you know, he went on a lot of Twitter rants and there was a lot of shocking things written there. Um, so I think we knew that they were in trouble for a long time. And then it was kind of towards the end of last year, it seemed like things had kind of gotten better. You know, she went on let's not speak of that big uh trip to that island <laughs> remember her 40th birthday. birthday um but anyway on that trip he organized that hologram of her dad oh um which God. was equal parts tr terrifying and equal parts kind of like nice <laughs> I, I still don't know it's um, not for me like I think that's weird not that like is anyone dead that I need to visit me but like I just yeah, it was very strange. So at the time, people were kind of like, oh, like they seem kind of okay. And then in January, so remember, when uh, wasn't it page six that reported mm -hmm. that they were talking about getting divorced and everyone was she like... She hired oh. Laura Wazer, which is a really famous... Um, yeah. Director. Like she represented Angie and Jolie and she did Kim and Chris's divorce. So that was such alarm bells. Yeah. God, remember Chris Humphreys. <gasps> Love. you know what's wild about this whole thing is how we have such an inside track like the fact that keeping up with the kardashians and it's something i do always really admire about all of them i know there's so much criticism over the kardashians but like they really don't hide anything on it. like they do except for courtney like but kim and chloe like they do go places that like are uncomfortable like yeah especially chloe and like the Chris stuff too, like, I mean, they got divorced so quickly. And the weird thing about the Kanye story that makes me sad is like, she always said like it was her, it, she had just turned 30. She wanted the fairy tale. She kind of rushed into the Chris thing. She just wanted the happy ending. And then it was like during that time, Kanye realized he was like 
in love with her mm-hmm. and then she realized it too and then they got together and I kind of was like oh like things do work out me and then I'm like do they <laughs> ah. obviously kids together beautiful kids together but I feel like it hasn't really been discussed how devastating this must be for her. There's a lot of focus on Chloe and Tristan, but no one's really talking about Kim because she's coming across very together. But I'm sure she's devastated. Heartbroken, yeah, because, you know, and especially because a few years ago, the focus would have been all on Chloe and how fucking shite her thing with Tristan was. Yeah. And Kim was always the solid one who had this amazing husband, amazing kids. They were both geniuses they were both was like amazing and now it's kind of fallen apart and I think she's trying to put on a front being like everything's grand but I'm sure she is heartbroken she's 40 she has four kids with him you know and it seems like she really did try to make it work and it just didn't yeah I know I wonder like I know obviously this is the last season of keeping up now like You've been watching it. I haven't watched it yet. Do you think they're going to go into what happened with her and Kanye? No, I don't think so. They are addressing it. You know, they've kind of had where the cameras are kind of filming Kim from far away as she's like on the phone to someone on Kanye's team and stuff. So they are addressing it in a way, but they're definitely not going to go into detail. We've said this so many times before in the podcast, before we've made our spinning off. Like, if I was married to someone who was like, right, we're moving to Wyoming or we're going here, I'd be like, what? Be like, 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 absolutely not. I'd move them all to Chicago, then all of a sudden being like, I'm going to go for president of the United States. Like, it's so much to take. And I think it's important as well to mention the fact, obviously, Kanye has been battling, you know, bipolar disorder. And Kim has talked about that. And when he was doing these rants or whatever, people were like, no, like, he's actually not well. And Kim had to come out and I'd say that was really hard for her to have to come out and basically defend him when he was out there liabling his own wife like suggesting he, she cheated yeah. on him then suggesting she tried to get an abortion like North is not that young I'm sure people in her past know that like this story is out there like all that stuff is so damaging so I actually think Kim has handled things really maturely like yeah. sometimes with Chloe like I do love her but like you know she's always putting stuff up where I don't know she's always passively aggressively talking about things without talking about and putting those quotes on Instagram yeah like creating headlines Miss Kim hasn't said anything and I kind of have to say I admire that a little bit like she's just keeping it silent and you compare it the reason I talk about this because Laura Wazer is also Angela Jolie's uh, attorney and I was talking about this the other day on RT and um, the difference between Kim and Kanye's divorce and Brad and Angelina's so Brad and Angelina's is going on for years now. Years. With all these leaks constantly coming out. So, I mean, they seem to be somehow coming from Angelina's camp. I don't know if they're coming from her or it's someone that knows her, but a lot of things... And they're very on her side. Kind of. on side, you know, and they're very damaging to Brad. You know, like there was a leak that she's willing to testify against him. Remember there was a report that something happened between him and Maddox. Coming on the private jet, yeah. There was like a suggestion of domestic violence is the word that was used in the documents, but obviously I don't I don't think we can say it was domestic violence. But there was some sort of incident between him and Maddox, but that got leaked first of all. Then it was leaked that she's going to testify. Then it got leaked the other day that like his three kids want to testify against him. So like not only is that damaging to his reputation, it's damaging to his career. There's a lot of insiders saying that this divorce is going to take years. Like they're still not divorced. She wants complete custody of the kids. He's fighting for custody. So it's just funny. Like you would think out of those two couples that Kim and Kanye is where the drama was going to be. But actually, mm-hmm. like they're not being dramatic. They're not actually recording what's going on for keeping up, which I think a lot of people would have said that that's what Kim would have done. So like you have to respect them a bit and also like they're protecting yeah. their kids by not leaking these things not discussing these things and then you look at Brad and Angelina and you're like the same yeah. thing happening there mm-hmm. yeah but what do you think is going to happen now so obviously Kanye just responded to her actual divorce proceedings this week he said also filed for a reconciling yeah so it, it seems like things are pretty amicable like they both want to join custody of their kids um Kanye is still in Wyoming who knows what he's doing is probably recording like 10,000 albums at one time. Um, 
so but at the same time some reports have come out saying that they have no contact at all and that you know when they want to change over with the kids she's contacting members of his team I so, yeah I, I kind of do as well just from the most recent episodes of keeping up she's on the phone to members of his team rather than speaking to her husband on the phone it's bizarre the whole thing so like, he ended the marriage so I'd say he's quite like yeah pissed off off about the whole thing but I feel like she's made the right decision for her family I'm still a bit on edge about it like I just think I feel some, like something is gonna happen I feel like he's gonna blow up with some someday on Twitter again mm. and I know like he's not well so it's just like a weird situation but I feel like it's not gonna end there like I just think something's gonna be said but maybe she's getting him to sign NDAs and stuff like that that's what you'd hope because I know her whole life is a reality show but like this is like the, their kids it's like family it's like yeah. I just think it's not right to leave these things and that's why with Angie thing it's like I don't like that sort of thing that like the kids the stuff with the kids is coming out I'm just like they have to grow up in this world and go to school and go to high school and try to make a way for themselves with all of their classmates knowing they're like dirty laundry like I just think it's wrong yeah Whereas not learning about this I think is only going to protect the kids but god like the kids are so young like what age is Chai? Shy is like two. She's the youngest, isn't she? No, Sam is the youngest. Um, sorry, I always forget about Sam. Yeah. He's so, only like, I think he's going to be two. It's sad. Um, like watching, like when you actually look at their family, like they've all like just not worked out in terms of love and relationships, which is really weird. Like if you think about well, obviously, we don't know anything about Kendall, so God knows she could be married for all we know. But Kylie, obviously, Travis didn't work out. Don't know um, what's going on there because it seems like they kind of are together. Sometimes together and then sometimes not. And then Chloe so, yeah. and her are back together. But like, if Kim and Kanye couldn't make it, the two most obsessed people with each other, I can't, like, come on, Tristan, no, I can't see it happening. And then Courtney and Scott and then Courtney and Eunice I don't know it's so, it's weird like watching from afar what do you think of Courtney and Travis Barker wild wild, wild. but I kind of love it yeah I think this could be I think when you watch the Kardashians like a lot of people would say that Courtney seems so wound up and so uptight and like stressed all the time and everything I feel like he's probably so chill and so easygoing and they've been friends for a long time yeah I think that's cute actually end up being a thing like she never really talked about Eunice and I just feel like with Travis she's very out there with him like she yeah. must think this is it like the one thing that like kind of breaks my heart though is that like I know this is probably heartbreaking for Scott I know he's with Amelia Hamlin at the moment but like a million people, I was like, I know. <laughs> it's just so sad because I think he is still absolutely mad about her, but they'll just never get back together. It's so like, sad. why is he going out with these like barely adult women? Like they can't even legally drink. It's so bizarre. I think he is like too afraid to fall in love for real. Yeah, I, and that's why he's kind of just going for these young gals. I don't know. I do feel really sorry for Scott. Like, obviously, when you watch the earlier seasons, you're like, Scott's an absolute prick. But, like, if you follow his journey from start to end... He's had such a tough life. Such a tough time. But I also feel he's done a really good 360. Like, I just think he has changed a lot. And if you compare him now to the final season from, like, the earlier seasons, he's got a handle on himself. Like, I know he has had to go back to rehab. But, like, we're not seeing these, like anger bursts we're not seeing these wild situations he seems to really care about the kids he wants to have all this family time with Courtney like it sounds like him and Sophia Richie broke up because of the amount of time he spends with Courtney and the kids so like all of that feels very mature to me and when you compare it to before like I don't know but I just think Courtney would never be able to forgive what happened in the past I think she's so stuck on what happened before and obviously like when you even see them when she was pregnant with their latest child remember he like disappeared for days and she was yeah like, I mean, wasn't that when they were in the Hamptons? It was like Courtney and Kim take the Hamptons or something. Okay. But like the weight of that must be horrendous. Like having an addict in your life like that is really, really tough. So I can understand. And I say there's so many things we don't know. I know. I think like all the time with the Kardashians, right? Because we see so much. 
and they're so honest and they show us so much so much so much if that's what they show us what are they not like do you remember in um lamar's biography oh my god yeah he talked about Chloe and Chloe knocking into this motel and he was like in a room full of prostitutes. I was like, what? And he said, well, like claimed that Chloe like beat the shit out of like a girl or something. Like what? My, like where were the cameras when that happened? Where? where? You're right, there's probably way more that goes on, but I'm excited to watch the end of the show, but I don't think this is it. Like I know they have this Hulu deal, isn't it? Yeah, Kim only tweeted the other day actually that it's coming really soon. So I know I remember when like. we had Perez Hilton on the podcast he was saying that they need to do the Kardashians kind of like Terry as mm. if, imagine it was a weekly like based on last week but like yeah last, like more in real time yeah we've always said that about the Kardashians it is annoying sometimes when like we're watching something and it's like the Christmas episode and it's July and you're like yeah oh. and sometimes I think they just do stupid things to fill airtime like in the most recent episode Chloe and freaking Tristan like go searching for UFOs or something and it's just so stupid and boring and I'm just like you have the most interesting life ever this is shit or like yeah a lot of the times the Chloe and Scott storylines is definitely just to get yeah it's just a filler yeah like let's give Scott his paycheck let's throw him (laughs) or like the, the kind of pranks they play on Chris I'm just like yeah they're they're sometimes funny though the Todd Crane's one was good I agree. It's the final season. Like, why are you putting weird things in? Like, yeah. that's the dirt. I need the oh, dirt. Dirt. A Rod and J Lo. The two people that have I'm surprised. Oh, no. names. I've just realized A Rod, J Lo. I know perfect names, but yeah. not perfect for each other. Not perfect for each other. I know. I think that's wild about A Rod. I don't know if you've followed his romances over the years, have you? kind of like I remember when he was with Cameron Diaz mm. he's been with a lot of like gorge young women and it never worked out and there's always been allegations of cheating with every person he's ever been with like ever so I remember when her and him and Jayla got together I was like mm. I didn't think it was gonna last but she's such a powerhouse and like god if I was a man JLo like obviously you would like she's an absolute oh god. yeah and she's like 50 and she looks she's it's which anyone um but I don't know then they had this whole modern family thing going on and the kids were all hanging out with yeah. each other. she actually did a really good interview with Oprah Winfrey I don't know if you've listened to Oprah's or watched her uh Super Soul Sunday series no I haven't but she oh so you would be obsessed I listened to them all during the winter lockdown I can't remember which one I listened to the podcast but they're actually on YouTube you can watch them but JLo was on one and like they were talking about A-Rod and stuff and she seemed really happy and she was like our kids all mingle and he's this and he's that and it's all good and um, but obviously there's been so many rumors and this really reminded me of Cheryl and Liam Payne do you remember when the rumors started to come out they're breaking up they like went OTT remember they went to that awards show Brits yeah Newton had ran, ran the story in fairness to Dan he's never wrong people always are like it's not true like Megan and Harry leaving and then it was like shit it was true but I remember Cheryl and Liam making such this big thing taking loads of selfies they were notoriously private but suddenly they were like posting loads of pictures and they went to the Brits when the rumors came out about JLo and A-Rod a few weeks ago first of all she put up an amazing TikTok which I'm obsessed with but the music is now gone from it which is so annoying she deleted it oh she deleted it yeah it's gone <laughs> anyway I love that video but like in it it was like talking about rumors and it was like all the headlines of her and A-Rod and then his face like fuck you and then they went to Cur- Turks and Caicos was it is that where they were um no so they went to the Dominican Republic where she's filming Shotgun Wedding and there was all these lovely photos and I just knew I was like the countdown is on they're going to announce the split and it must be so horrible like if I was in the spot like like that and I was having a tough time with my boyfriend and I knew something could come to an end. I'd obviously want to fight back too. I'd want to be like, no, like it's fine. But then it's like, shit, no, it's not. Yeah. Um, but I mean, another sign I always felt was that like they seemed to never be getting married. Like they kept being like, oh, whenever, like some point, they were never actually deciding to get married. Um well, like, so before the corona, like corona freaking happened, they were actually planning on getting married last summer in Italy. 
oh which is God. like one of the worst affected places. Um, so she actually did an interview with Andy Cohen in December and she kind of explained what happened. She was like, look, we were planning to get married in Italy, blah, blah. Obviously that didn't happen. And then she was at the time, and I remember thinking it was weird. She was like, you know, like it'll happen when it happens. And she kind of seemed like she wasn't really that arsed about it. Yeah, that's, see, that's like alarm. Yeah. Um, and I also feel, we've said this before about people in general, but I also think when couples are so OTT on Instagram, I'm always like, what's going on there? Mm-hmm. It's always makes they were me, OTT. Yeah, it just always makes me feel like something's missing. But I feel sorry for her. Like, what's with all these, like, ambitious, gorgeous, creative, rich yeah. women? And, like, they are losing out on, like, these relationships and, like, love just isn't happening. Like, is it the people they're going for? Is it the guys that they're setting their sights on? Like, it's... Like, if Kim Kardashian and Jennifer Lopez can't hold a man down, do we have any hope? Do like, we? do we? Do we? <laughs> you put it like that. And Cheryl. And Jen- you know what I love, actually? I did a story on it this morning. Um, last night, I don't know if you saw Kim's story, but she was in Miami. And like she never goes out and she was like in a club and everything. So I love how like it's obviously Kim Kardashian. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. But she's just like you and me. We're like if you break up with someone, you're like, right, I need to go out. You need to wear an unreal outfit, get a good pick, put it on Insta. Love I remember it. when like not weddings would have been really small. But I remember watching documentaries about Prince William and Kate when they were getting married. And they were talking about the time when they took a break. Remember, they took like a break for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And in it, they said that like when it happened, Kate like started wearing these knee high boots and started getting spotted out in clubs. Like she kind of led the paparazzi there. Like so instead of being like, oh, William, she just started going out. And everyone always says that's what what, what made it all happen. That he basically yeah. said, oh, I want you back. So like even princesses in waiting, like even <laughs> Kim K, she's like, show him what he's missing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It works, girls. <laughs> so I keep thinking, were you silent? Or were you, <laughs> or were you silent? <laughs> so good. I can't go. Will we, will we leave it there? All the breakup news. Yeah, I think so. That's odd. Oh, didn't we want to mention the bold type though as well, which we're both loving? Le- Look, we're both like none. <laughs> Let's end on a high note. So yeah, Kendra was like. Well, after I got my vaccine, I was so tired. And Kendra was like, you should start watching the bowl type. And every time you suggest a show, I don't know why I don't just watch it immediately. Because I'm always like, I know, because I'm always right. I know the in love. But um, if you guys haven't seen it, it's about these three girls that work in a magazine, which is clearly like Vogue, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Although it was but it's like- actually inspired by the life of the former editor- editor-in-chief of Cosmo. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it is actually very Cosmo, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's all like sex. Yeah. But it's so funny, like every time I say the word Scarlet, <laughs> I'm always thinking of like Scarlet for your ma. Like I can, hear, I can hear like the Dublin like Scarlet, <laughs> Scarlet. Um, it's so addictive. I haven't even yeah. watched the whole first season. Maybe I have, I don't know. But I'm trying to not binge it because I just love it so much. So much. I have a few episodes left. So there's four seasons on Netflix. And I have a few episodes left of season four. And then it's so sad because the final season is actually just wrapped filming. So it's actually a free form show. So it's um, a channel over in the US. It's kind of like the CW. I think it's attached to ABC or something, but that's what it's on over in the US. So they've just finished filming that, um, which is sad because I don't want it to end. I'm trying to think of things I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to seeing the Sex and the City reboot. I know people yes, want to see yeah. that um, the coronavirus plays a part in it, but I'm like, no, that's fair enough. Like, nothing's talking about COVID. Um, and the fact that Aiden is back. I know, I know. Not, like, is Big dead? Is Samantha dead? Samantha's not back. There's so I have a feeling, dead. yeah, that Samantha might be dead. I think they're going to be like, her cancer came back yeah I think so and they might do a funeral for her or something and at the funeral she'll see Aiden because he'll be like oh, I read in the newspaper that she died and she's like Aiden God, yeah. I should just write this you should <laughs> Like, but there's obviously going to be some sort of replacement for Kim because you need that sexual element in sex in the city like you can't not have a character who's riding around I think there's going to be a younger character who teaches them all yeah. about their, after Big's death or something Oh, sorry, I'm saying everyone's dying. Like maybe. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. I'm like, there was a train crash. Maybe they could die of COVID. Like, I don't know. Oh my God. That would be crazy. But like, this is not good happen. the world. Like, um, but I'm excited for that. What else am I really excited for to come back? Um, have you ever seen Succession? No, but I should start watching it. Kendra. I know. So you will die. It's literally basically. Is it really that good? It's one of the best TV shows I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, oh, I always tell about the affair. Good. The affair is quite long. Succession, there's only been two seasons, but it's meant to be based on Rupert, Rupert Murdoch and his family. Yeah. yeah, I've kind of heard what it's about. It is honestly, if I even hear the music of it now, I would just get so excited. Like, it's one of the best things I've ever seen. It's very dramatic and it's very dark, but every episode you're like, you just like you have to get the next one. So I randomly be on Netflix now. On now, t- if you've now TV or Sky, you can watch it in box sets. Okay. But please watch it. I trusted you in the bold side. Okay, trust me. In the okay, end. I will. I will. I have so many things on my list. Filming. They haven't even started filming the next series. I'm like sweating. I'm like, oh my god, it's the same when Line of Duty ended. I was like, sorry, you haven't. Like our generation are so used to the binging on Netflix. So when something's over, I'm like, what do you mean it's over where is the next what do you think of line of duty this season it's definitely not as it's slow as last season but the last episode yeah that the most recent episode was brilliant it was like over the page sir i was like, <gasps> I like know. the episodes before that were kind of shy you know it's funny though and a lot of people a lot of my friends have been saying that to me like friends of mine that love the show are just like oh i don't know i remember have you seen the fall Jamie Dornan's show. No, I haven't. And I still, I know. Another <laughs> thing I need to add to my yeah. long list. The, the Fall was either two seasons, three seasons. I can't remember. I think it was only three. But anyway, the final season, when that aired, Jamie had just filmed Fifty Shades. So he was massive. Whereas the other two seasons, he was known, but like it definitely didn't have as much of like a worldwide like eyes on it. Yeah. Uh, the first like couple of episodes are literally a character that's in hospital because I can't ruin it for you now but anyway it's very medical it's like it kind of changed from chasing a serial killer to being medical and everyone's like this is just everyone's bad. like are we watching Eeyore so I remember writing stories about it at the time and people were like really disappointed and then in the final episode like I rewatched the fall god I've honestly watched a hundred new series during lockdowns for fuck's sake I rewatched it during one of the lockdowns and still to this day the final episode in that series I literally can't even take a breath it's so dramatic like yeah. it's like they did it on purpose if the series was kind of slow and then suddenly you're like <gasps> and I just have a feeling that Jed Mercurio he's the writer of Lion G I feel like that's what's happening because the last episode was randomly dramatic but then yeah. I just feel like someone's gonna just like get their head sliced off in the next episode. Something oh crazy God. is gonna happen. But remember as well, he made um bodyguard. So good. I'm obsessed with Richard Madden as well. <laughs> There's an argument there, and one of my friends saying to me the other day, like maybe Lion of Duty needs to go out on a high as well. Mm. I don't yeah, know. And that's what I was actually thinking about the bull type. Because okay. one of the so I used to watch Game of Thrones. I was such a big fan of Game of Thrones, but they fucking ruined it. Like the final season. The final season was really disappointing. So many people were disappointed about it. So I do agree, like some shows need to just end while they're still good. You know what? I would honestly just keep watching Line of Duty for Aiden Dunbar with his mother, mother of God. He's one of the best interviews I've ever had, actually. <laughs> yeah, he was so nice. So nice. Some of the stuff when he's like, mother, or you, you, you said something like, no evidence. I'll show you no evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really make sense. I love him. I love him. It doesn't really make sense. I love it. And then the other one before we go, Friends Reunion. Now, I'm, mm. I'm a bit confused about this. I was talking about this on RT today with Dolly and Moria. Like, they've all said that they're not going to be in character. No, it's literally just them chatting about it. Like, like, sorry. So it's just a reunion special. And I've heard through like rumors and stuff that it's going to be hosted by James Corden. Oh, I saw that. There's lots of questions over who is going to host. It. Apparently it's James Corden. But look, um, I think people want to see like Ross and Rachel married 20 years later and like 
Um, so it was never it was never going to be like that but I think that's what fans have been calling for though yeah. for years and I think that's why there's disappointment but I was saying the other day and I do agree with this talking again about ending on a high I think if they did do what everybody wanted which was an actual reunion I don't know what have just ruined it like there's so much talk about how sex in the city has been destroyed by those two movies like people just hated the second one in particular mm. Um, but now that I'm really into the bold type, I kind of want a bold type movie. I don't want it to end. But it's so hard to know where to make it no. I think it will be I, I think the whole Sex and the City thing is stupid. I actually freaking love those movies. They're gas. I didn't really like them. Like, they're obviously kind of shite, but like, it's what people want. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you wanted to see freaking Aiden come back and stuff. I think the thing is, is like, Sex and the City has kind of been like Vogue or Cosmopolitan like it's and it's been like almost an agony and and each episode you'd learn this like life lesson another thing I rewatched during lockdown but I remember you'd watch an episode and be like yeah whereas with the movies it's so different because it has to be this one storyline and like the whole wedding with Big and everything like I wasn't happy with that whole ending like they didn't talk to it for months but then suddenly they see each other in the closet and it's like it's all good I forgive you I was like do you? sorry can we just talk about one of the most powerful scenes ever when she like hits him with the flowers and then charlotte's like no no i love charlotte no. i the only part of that scene i didn't like was how she dropped the phone i was like oh my god like, it was so yeah and it like dramatically fell to the floor <laughs> I, I, I like the headpiece i'm gonna be honest with you i was like oh yeah it was like a peacock or something right, if a man did that to me there's no way I would just go back into his arms when I saw him in the closet. I'd be like, sorry, like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my God, absolutely not. It's weird how that, I think that's probably why, whereas I just think in the series, Carrie just makes slightly better decisions. But this is, so this is what I think is going to happen. Like I said, Samantha's going to die. Let's say Big doesn't die because I don't want too many deaths. Samantha dies and they're at the funeral and Aiden goes, and then she realizes Aiden's like divorced from his wife. And she's like, oh my God. And then there's some young character in there telling everyone about Bumble and Tinder and Hinge and right, I don't know if Hinge is in America. And she'll try to do all these dating things. And yeah, I think you're right. I think Aiden maybe they'll bring back, remember Jennifer Hudson was in. Yeah, I loved her in it actually. Yeah, she could come back as maybe one of the younger characters. She's back to her time to get married, though. I don't want everyone to get divorced. Oh, yeah, that's true. But that's what I think will happen. So if Big doesn't die, maybe they just get a divorce. But wait, did they not say in the last one they weren't going to? Oh, they did get married, didn't they? With them? Yeah. yeah, they did. I don't know. That whole ending was weird to me. It was like, in the end, we just did a civil service. I'm like, that's not very very well, Jen. Did they get married? Yeah, no, they did. Yeah, but they got married in a registry office. Yeah. They're yeah. not our registry office, obviously like the New York one, which is like glam. But I don't know. I just felt in the end, she kind of gave up a lot of herself and she went against her morals. The stuff she's been writing in her columns for years, the things not to do. I feel like she gave all that up in the end. Like, why didn't she just stay with Aiden? Like, yeah. and controversial opinion, but I think Aiden's hotter. Oh, I, yeah, I think so. Oh, a lot of people would disagree. Okay. But I, think I thought that I actually think Big is hotter because you watch The Good Wife. No. Yeah. He plays the husband in that and he's a very different character in that. Um, but it's not that I fancy Big, but I do like that tall, dark, handsome man who treats you like shit. So obviously... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Aiden is like... Aiden's the one you should marry. Yeah. You have your fun. little furniture maker, designer. And even remember in the Dubai one, was it the Dubai one where he turns Abu around Dhabi. and he has the baby, or sorry, out of, and he has the baby cradle. I was like, he never, they could be like, get the fuck off me. Like, I yeah. just, I don't know. very interesting to see where it goes. Very interesting, very interesting to see where it goes. I would love her and Aiden to end up together. Yeah, I would like that a lot. And I hope Miranda and Steve are good. Like, I have all these hopes. Oh, yeah, Steve. But I think Kim Cattrall would be dead. Also, just because Sarah Jessica Parker is the executive producer and they clearly have had a massive falling out, I just feel, yeah. unless she wants to come across like a bigger person, she could not kill her off and just say she's 
I just don't know how they'll like go about it. If she's not dead. Yeah, because they can't just be like, oh, she's on holiday. Like people are like, why don't you just walk off her? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Video call, video call her. Very interesting. It is disappointing that she's not going to be back because she's just such an iconic character and she always brought like the laughs to the show. It is sad how like the demise of their relationship played yeah. out so publicly. What actually kicked that all off? Did she, was she the person who said at some point she was just like me and Sarah Jessica Parker never got on? I feel like it came out of nowhere one time. Yeah, and by the way it's been perceived is that they never really got on. I know, maybe so, you look at all the scenes of them together and you're just like, were you nearly excited? I know. Like, it makes me so sad. I'm like, it's all a lie. It <laughs> is weird that she wouldn't go back for the fans, but I guess she's done it so many times now. She obviously yeah. went back and did those movies. But like, do you remember when her mother, was it her mother died? And Sarah Jessica Parker was like, I'm so sorry. And she was like, hey, no, it, I think it was her brother. Oh yeah. But she was so like aggressive. I was like, oh yeah. my God. That post is still up. I remember a while ago I was like writing about the reboot and I was kind of like writing about what had happened between them before and the post is still there. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Very dramatic. But yeah, do we know when that's happening? Have they started filming? I don't think they've started filming yet. They're meant to have started this spring, so I don't know. I'm just excited to hear more about it because if the first big surprise is like big isn't coming back, I presume that was like, a decision of his wasn't it isn't that kind of the way the reports came out I don't know because page six reported it but then he like someone commented on his Instagram or something like that and was like why aren't you coming back whatever and he was like don't believe what you read in the rags or something like that oh, <laughs> so he's kind of hinted that he might be coming back so I don't know I'm so, that would be like the greatest shock of all time if like the yeah. lead is incorrect but <laughs> Aiden, Aiden um sorry John Corbett I'm like Aiden John Corbett who played Aiden like he properly said in an interview he was like yeah I am coming back so that's like a fish I'm so excited actually as well before we go final thoughts on this Bridgerton and the Duke not returning like the, I feel like we don't fully know the truth in that situation because obviously I, we know yeah. that every Bridgerton novel is based on a different member of the Bridgerton family that's fine everybody knew that but given how the Duke and Daphne like they just went down so well they were like the ish couple of the season they're both super famous almost normal people level of like Paul Maskell and Daisy yeah. now he's being tipped to play Bond I don't understand why he's not coming back like he's not meant to be playing a pivotal role but like people on the bridge inside of said he was meant to be in some in a few scenes uh, yeah like from what i've from the reports that are going around he was asked to appear in like maybe the first two episodes and he was like no i just think that's so bizarre especially when the show has catapulted you into fame like i know he was in things before and he was kind of relatively famous yeah. but this is like next fucking level fame but I said that to you, like, imagine there was a new season of normal people and Paul Mask was like, no, you're grand. Like, yeah. that's the show that made you, I don't know, I feel like we just don't know the truth of the situation. Obviously, a lot of people are saying it's because of Bond, but, like, do you think that's what's actually happening? Maybe. But, like, even... I think he has, like, things on the horizon and he's just like, I'm too big for this I now. I feel sorry for... BB Denver though because I just feel like her I mean she's part of the Bridgerton family she's gonna have to be in it but you'd wonder are some of her scenes gonna be cut a bit short now because yeah. people want to know what's going on with her in the Duke is she gonna mention him like I don't know it's just it's very weird but I was really sad about it I just thought he was amazing in it like I loved them together as a couple and it's sad thing oh god unless they like replace him and have him in the background of like I don't think they do that and it's really disappointing as well because obviously spoiler alert if you haven't watched Bridgerton by the way um obviously at the end um they like have the baby and stuff and like that's at the very end so we don't actually get to see them as like a cute little family yeah and we're just not gonna see that it would be nice to see that yeah it's disappointing for fans including me but I love that Nick Nick Coughlin, including us. I love that Nicola Coughlin is playing such a pivotal role who I love her best actress 2021 
Mm. Um, but I love the cheese back and I'm loving his style actually. I'm loving all of her red carpet at home yeah. and all that stuff and um, for the awards shows. Like I think she's just killing it at the moment. It's amazing seeing Irish actress like do so well out of it. Yeah. Um, I think she's gonna be in like every book season, do you think? Oh yeah. 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 yeah I think so. Well look, we should leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed and we shall do this again. Woo! It was actually so nice to like do it kind of seeing each other, you know? Face to face. I'm like, hello. I know I can see your bedroom. I could see like, jump. I know my bed. Hello. Oh. You see my Gossie's cue cards are in the background. I'm like, I've like, got to print a few more in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll do this again next week and hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, that hit the spot.